I don't know about you, but if you're anything like me, you probably have a lot of paper laying around and it's doing you no good in this age of AI. No worries, because in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use your iPhone to scan these documents, upload them to a beautiful RAG system, and then chat with those documents later down the line. So this is great if you have all of your receipts in order when tax time comes around or you're just looking for that note that you took with a prospect just a week ago. Or maybe you just really want to organize your journals and ask AI questions about the different trends that are happening in your life. I'm going to show you how to build my easy scan rag system that just allows you to take a picture with your phone of a document and then load it up into a rag database and from there you can chat with it using an AI tool. So this is going to be a three step video. I'm going to first cover how to set up the document scanning automation on your iPhone using shortcuts, which is the iPhone's automation platform. Then I'm going to show you how to load your documents into a Supabase RAG system using N8N. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to chat with those documents by building out a simple AI agent in N8N. And my promise to you is that by the end of this video, you're going to be getting a free template to use my exact systems in N8N and shortcuts, 100% free. Now let's imagine for a moment that I wanted to scan this Home Depot receipt right here and I wanted to put it into my RAG system so that when tax time comes around, I have this receipt on file and I can actually query this and find it. This is just one of the many use cases that you could use this system for. So I have my receipt and I have my phone right here and let's imagine that I wanted to kick this workflow off. All I would need to do is activate this shortcut and then it's going to ask me how many pages my document has. This is one of the neat features about this shortcut is that it's pretty smart. It can actually give the right amount of images that it needs to based on the document. So if we have like a 10 page document, it'll actually ask me to take 10 images. But in this case, I just have one image. So I'll enter one and I'll hit done. And then it's going to say, what should I call this document? This is for the naming convention. So I'm just gonna say Home Depot receipt and then I'll hit done. And now it's going to activate the image part of this. So I can actually get as close to this as possible now, take a picture that's nice and clear. And then when I'm ready, I can hit use photo. And then from there, it's going to upload that document that I just scanned. And on the back end, what's happening is this is going into an N8N automation that's then going to upload that to my RAG system. And that system looks like this. So over here in N8N, we first have this webhook and this is what's receiving that automation output from our previous iPhone shortcut. And then it's going to be searching Dropbox because that's where we've uploaded the image to. From there, it's going to create a URL using these code nodes right here. And then finally, it's going to download that file. From there, we pass it to ChatGPT for image analysis. And then we pass it to a JSON cleaner, which then basically reformats that image analysis into something that can actually be uploaded into my database. And that's where we finally add a row to Supabase. And Supabase is this fancy tool that allows you to create amazing tables, but it also allows you to use something called PG Vector, which vectorizes your content and creates data points to connect them to different things that you're going to be typing in when you're searching for these documents later. And that's what this Supabase Vector Store tool is doing. Now I'm going to show you what this looks like live when it's loading in. So what I can do is I can go to the executions tab here and I'm just going to take a picture of this receipt once again, just to show you guys an example of how this works. And I'll go ahead and send that off. And now if I go over to the executions tab, you're going to notice that pretty soon here, another execution will pop up. As you can see, it says running here. So if I click on it, this is going to be the new file that I'm loading in, which is that Home Depot receipt. And I'll show you how it shakes out at the end. All right, so it took about 19 seconds to upload and it went through our entire process here. As you can see, I can find the Dropbox file that it uploaded. And as you can see here, it's given the file name. I can view the file as well. And I can see that it's that exact receipt that I just took a picture of. Now, if I go back here, the next thing that it's going to do is it's going to analyze that file using ChatGPT, and it's going to tell me the information that's within that receipt. So it's gonna give me any keywords in there, and it's also just going to give me the receipt information. 
Now, as you can see here, it didn't quite get everything, but the nice thing is, is that we have the Apple OCR actually looking at that receipt as well. So there's two sets of text recognition that this is going through. And then it's gonna pass all of that information to Supabase, where it's actually going to show me the text recognition from Apple, and it's going to put all of the values in there. This does a little bit of a better job of grabbing some of those numbers. And it's also going to put the source URL in here so that I can find that receipt later down the line. And now if I go back to Canvas and then we back out of this document loader, I'm going to show you the next document chat workflow where I can actually ask questions about my documents. All right, so now I'm here in my document chat workflow and what this one is going to do is it's going to hit the AI agent with a message. That AI agent is going to talk to the embedding model down here and then that embedding model is going to retrieve that document out of my Supabase account. So if I open up the chat here and I just say, give me the Home Depot receipt in my documents. It's going to go out do a little bit of a search on the docs, and then it's gonna come back with that information that it queried, and it's going to give me this answer right here. So it got all of the information, got the total, got the taxes, everything that had to do with that, and it even came back with my URL here. So if I copy this URL, and then I go to paste this URL and send that off, it should pull me to my Dropbox where I have that saved. And boom, just like that, the URL brings me directly to the document that I needed. Next, I'm going to show you how I built these workflows out. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to tell you how you can access the templates so that you can use this system as well. All right, so now we have this loaded up on the iPhone and this is what it looks like behind the scenes. I'm just gonna walk you through every step of the way how this shortcut was built. So first it asks me for a number using the ask for shortcut step. So you can change this out for a word, you can change it to a number, you can change it to like a Boolean value. I just have it set to number so that I can set a number in my variables and then it can use that for the amount of photos that I need to take. And then you just give it a message. How many pages does your document have? Next, I have it ask me for text. And that's for what I should call the document. So that's giving it a title. So we have these first two ask for steps and then it goes down into a repeat cycle. Here's where it's actually going to repeat based on whatever this ask for input was. We're going to use that for the number of times that we need to repeat this. And then we go down to the take one photo with the back of the camera. And since we have this repeating until this ask for input is satisfied, meaning the number that I set in the beginning is actually reached, it's just going to keep repeating and asking me to take a photo multiple times. Finally, we go on to combine these images. I didn't want to upload them to Dropbox in a bunch of different images. So instead, we just combine them into one giant long image. So what this neat combine feature does here is it allows me to combine all of the images that I took vertically. And it's combining the repeated results, whatever came out of this repeat cycle here. So it's going to grab all those photos and combine them together. Finally, we move on to the first stage of OCR, and this usually catches most of the text that's in this workflow. So it actually grabs that combined image from the previous one here, and it extracts all of the text that's in that image. Finally, after we've extracted that text, we save it to Dropbox. For the destination path, I name it after the other ask for input up here of the title. So we just use that title on this right here for the destination path. And that actually saves it to Dropbox for us directly all in the background so that we don't have to do any manual saving on the front end. We can just take the pictures of our documents and we're good to go. And then finally, I have it hitting my N8N webhook. And this is how it actually sends all of this information from this run that we just had straight over to N8N. Now, if I click into this webhook here, you're going to see that we're just sending the request body of file path. So the path for the Dropbox that we sent and then also the text from image. So anything that that OCR on our iPhone picked up from that image in terms of text. So just like I showed you at the end of that shortcut, it's going to hit our N8N webhook over here. And when it hits that N8N webhook, it's going to trigger the rest of this automation to commence. The first thing that it's going to do is it's going to search for that Dropbox file that I uploaded by title. Now, if I click into this Dropbox query search, you're going to see that we just pull the file name from the body of the JSON that comes through that webhook. 
So that webhook is just going to send over the title and we're simply going to query our Dropbox based on that title. And we're going to return all the files that have that name then we're going to get the most recent. Now, what this is doing is just looking to see and make sure that there aren't any duplicates of that file. And if there are duplicate names of that file, it's just going to get the single most recent file that we uploaded so that we don't have any confusion and it doesn't reload our old documents. Next, we're going to create the URL for Dropbox so that we can download the file. Now, what it gives us out of the gate is just a path, but what we do is we put the path on the end of this right here, the HTTPS slash slash www.dropbox.com slash home slash, and then it puts in our file name with all of the proper dashes and percent signs that it needs in order to pass that URL properly so that I can look at it when I'm in chat mode later down the line. Then this step here downloads the file from Dropbox and puts it into our session so that we can then upload it to ChatGPT for that second image analysis. And then finally, since the image analysis step doesn't put out a clean JSON output, we just have it use this JSON cleaner in order to clean up the structure of that so that we can then pass it over into our Supabase account. And then this is going to add a row in Supabase. It's going to fill out a few fields in Supabase. First of all, it's gonna fill out the text recognition field. It's going to fill out the summary field, the title field, and the URL. So it's filling out all of these different fields for us. Once it's done that, it's going to go to the vector store in Supabase. So not only is it saving it as just a normal Supabase row in our table, but it's also uploading it to another database that we have in parallel called documents. So if you remember right, one was called docs, one is called documents. The documents one is the one where we actually have everything get vectorized so that the AI agent can understand it and chat with it. And then if I go back to my canvas here, you're going to see that we're using the default data loader and I have the type set to JSON. So it's loading in that information in JSON format. And we're using the recursive character text splitter with a 1000 chunk size and a 500 chunk overlap. And what this is going to look like over in Supabase is it's going to be a database filled with all of our documents. We have this regular database here. And as you can see, we have the Home Depot receipt loading in right here. So it has the ID, the unique ID for that. It has when it was created. It has the text recognition from Apple. It has the summary text from our OpenAI uh, image recognition. And then it also has the title and the document URL. And then in parallel to this docs table, we also have the documents table. And this is where the embeddings are stored so that the model can actually search for this in semantic space and find exactly what we're looking for. And then this is where the chatting with your documents comes in. From here, you can send a message using the basic N8N trigger to send a chat message, or you could hook something like Telegram up to this and you could chat with it through Telegram or Slack or any other sort of texting tool or messaging tool. And then from there, it's going to send that message over to the AI agent. The AI agent is pretty standard. It just has a message model with OpenAI using ChatGPT for this. Then we also have the window buffer memory. This is just keeping the memory of this conversation that we have going on right here. And the tool that it has connected to this is the retrieve docs tool. Now, if I click into here, you're going to see that I have this connected to my documents table. And if I go back to Canvas here, you're going to see that we are using this embedding model right here, text embedding three small. So that's how I'm able to chat with this. But like I said, you don't have to keep this in N8N. You can move it to a different chat platform. Now I'm going to be giving you all three of these templates in today's video entirely free. And in order to get those, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go down to the description. You're gonna join our free community using the link just click that link, get signed up, send us over your email, make sure it's a legit email. We are going to be sending you a verification when you sign up. So you'll have to grab that code, come back over to school and send me that in a DM. And then once you're in the community, you can go to the classroom tab. And then from there, you can go into our agent builds course and you can access this exact rag system. I'm going to be giving you all three templates. I'm going to give you the shortcuts template so you can load this into your phone or your Mac. I'm going to be giving you the document loader template in N8N, and I'm also going to be giving you the chat template. I hope you enjoyed this video on my document scanning chat system. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm curious to hear how you're going to be using this. And with that, we'll see you in the next video.